Hi good people, Titus here for another Unreal Engine tutorial, and in this video, I'll show you how to import your sprite sheets and extract the images into flipbooks so you can create 2D animations with them. We'll then take those animations and we'll drive them using blueprints to create 2D movement in a 3D space. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, we have the um, third person template here. First thing we're going to do is create our folders, or I guess I should say folder. Uh, it's just going to be one. And I'm going to call this one sprites. Go into there and I'm actually going to actually create one extra folder. I'm going to call this my player. And then um, from itch.io, I downloaded some sprite sheets. Um, and they're uh, just make sure they're kind of like free to use, but there's a lot of free assets on there that you guys can uh, follow along with if you want. Um, but any sprites will do. So uh, I'm going to use my double jump, fall, I'm going to do an idle animation, a jump, and a run, I think, starting off. I might expand this topic into future videos, but I think for this one, this should demonstrate the point um, you know, effectively. So I'll drag these over here. It'll then import my, uh, my sprite sheets. Uh, I think we'll start off by creating an idle. Um, it's just as simple as right clicking, going to sprite actions, and then you have an option to extract sprites. From there, uh, it's gonna automatically detect, and it usually does a pretty good job. If it doesn't, um, typically you should know, if you're making your own sprites, you probably know the sprite size. Um, and if you're using a program uh, like Libre Sprite, you know, you, you actually specify uh, what uh, sprite size you're actually working with uh, when you're making your art assets anyway. So you, uh, but if you didn't make the asset, it's usually labeled pretty well. So um, you can set the sprite extract methods from auto. So basically if you see the little yellow squares, it's probably good if it looks correct, which this one is. But if it's off or it doesn't detect right, set it to grid. And then under the cell width and height, just put in whatever the, the actual sprite size is. So this one's a 32 by 32. So I'll change that. And then you see it cuts them up appropriately. And then I can hit extract. And then I have all my images down here. Now to make an actual flipbook, you just simply select or shift select all the images. And then you can right click and create a flipbook. I'm gonna leave it at the default name of idle. Lock that in. And if we open this up, you can see your sprite sheet in action. And this is our idle animation. It's pretty good. Um, so we're gonna have to do that for the double jump as well. So I can right click sprite actions, extract sprites. I'm gonna, this one did a good job, but I'm gonna just show the, you know, the manual way. Just set it to grid, set it to 32 by 32, and then extract. And then I can shift select all those images, right click, create a flipbook, and then we have our double jump. Now with our fall animation, it's just one sprite. Um, so what you'll have to do is go to sprite actions and actually create the sprite from it. So you still have to make the sprite. Uh, and then we're using flipbooks in this one. So even though it's just one single image, just right click and create a flipbook. And then that's gonna be our fall animation there. And then I think I had a run animation in here somewhere. Yep, there's my run action. So more of the same, right click, sprite actions, and extract sprites. I'll set it to grid, and I'll put in 32 by 32. Extract, and then I can shift select all those uh, run actions. Right click, create a flipbook, enter to lock it in, and then we have a pretty fancy run animation here. So let's now set up the, um, the actual sprite to run off a blueprint. Uh, normally I'd make a brand new blueprint, but uh, for this one I'm going to actually borrow the third person one just because it has a lot of the setup pre-done. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty short. Uh, so we're going to blueprints, open up the third person. I'm gonna go to the viewport, and for the character mesh, I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm going to hide it in game and make it completely invisible, just for now. 
I'll select the main uh, third person uh, character self reference. I'll hit add. I'll type in flipbook and you can choose paper flipbook. Name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave the defaults. And then near the top, it'll ask you what source flipbook uh, you want it to have. I'm gonna choose the idle. And then we can see we have our uh, sprite. It's not positioned correctly and our capsule is probably too big for it. But if you look right here, there's our sprite. And then we can move around um, just like normal. We just need to set up the, uh, the logic to drive the animation. And we probably want his, you know, the feet to touch the ground. So um, you could, if you wanted to, uh, you could scale your sprite and make it bigger. I'm gonna leave it at one for now and just drag the sprite down. I'm gonna go to the right view and turn off snapping. Put the feet right there, compile, save. And then that looks a little bit better. Looks like the feet's touching the ground there. Um, let me go back to perspective. The capsule component's probably too big too, but I'm not gonna worry about that in this video. But uh, if you are borrowing this, you'd wanna scale that down to be the size of your sprite. Otherwise you're gonna get a lot of triggers that you probably didn't mean to. Um, but all right, so let's actually start working on the code. Uh, we'll go to the event graph. And a lot of the sprite logic can be driven in tick. Uh, I try to avoid tick like the plague, but with a 2D game, um, I think it's all right. So we'll do a uh, event tick, just because tick is very expensive, because it runs every frame. Um, there's gonna be two main um, functions that we're gonna be using to drive this logic. Uh, one is the uh, is falling uh, function. We can drive a lot of the this just with that. Um, and then the other one is going to be uh, velocity because with the velocity function um, you can do a few things you can drag off and get a uh, vector length although maybe it's just vector length yeah just vector length sorry um, and then we can use that to actually tell if the uh, the player character is standing still or moving. If they're standing still, obviously you're gonna play the idle animation. If they're moving, we're gonna assume they're running, so you're gonna play the run animation. Um, with the is falling, uh, we can use that to tell if they're um, in the air, and then thus they're either gonna be falling or jumping. And then I'll show you how to switch between those. So um, coming off, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna press and hold B, click in the graph to get a branch node in here and then I'm just gonna drag in my character movement drag off that get is falling and I'm gonna hook up this execution pin here and then I'm gonna drag this actually further down to give myself some space all right uh, so from here uh, we can come in and do a uh, set flipbook and you'll choose the one that references the name of uh, whatever flipbook you gave it. And I'm just gonna pop this up here. Now, because the, if the is falling is true, that can either be jumping or falling, right? So we don't know which flipbook to play. So let's drag off this and do a select. And this is a pretty cool utility function. Um, we can basically set the index to a boolean and then off the uh, the boolean check we can maybe do um, get velocity and then instead of getting a vector length we can actually just split this structure pin and now we have access to the z values so remember z is the um, the up and down right it's the blue line uh, so we can tell if it's basically moving in the in the up direction or falling in 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 that axis, basically. Um, so the best way to do that is just do a uh, less equal. 
and then you drag the Z value into the top here. So if whatever the Z value, if it's uh, less than or equal to zero, uh, then we'll plug the Boolean into the index here. If that's true, then the character is falling, which we got the fall one right here. If it's false, then they're jumping. So we'll do double jump. Basically, if, if the Z value is negative, the character's going down, which kind of makes sense, right? Um, and that'll be how we set the flipbook up here. And it's pretty much, you know, that simple. Now, coming off the false pin, we have to get a little tricky. We have to go into another branch node, uh, which I don't like to do, but, um, you know, sometimes you can get away with it. Uh, and then we're going to do another get velocity. Uh, but this time, we're going to drag off this and just do vector length. And then from there, you can actually do a not equal. This little Boolean check. And then we'll drag this in the top pin. Bottom will set to zero. And we'll plug the condition in here. So basically, if the velocity does not equal zero. So if that is tr uh, this evaluates to true, then the character is moving. Um, and because they're moving, we should probably play the run flipbook. This one right here. Now if they're, if this evaluates to false, it means it is zero, which means they're not moving, uh, which then means we should probably play the idle animation just like that and if I didn't make any mistakes we can compile save do a quick uh, quick play can't see my character I gotta move my camera and then we can see the little guys moving around and running if I jump that's working and if I fall I'm falling correctly now I think with the 2d games you might want a double jump um, so that's easy enough. We can go to the viewport, and if you select your third person character, I think if you search jump, uh, there should be a jump max count. I'm just gonna set that to two, or you can do three or you know however many jumps you want. And now I have a double jump. I think the character maybe moves a little bit too quickly uh, just in this space, so I'm gonna go into the character movement and then I am going to max walk speed. I'm going to set that to maybe 300 and then maybe set this to 100. And I think I'm going to change other stuff, but I can't think of anything right now. So we'll save that compile. And now this looks a little bit better. All right. But, um, Right now we have our 2D sprite moving in a 3D environment. You know, maybe, you know, this is kind of like Octopath Traveler. Maybe you want this, maybe you don't. Um, if you wanted to lock it in a 2D axis so they can't, you know, they can only move in one plane, uh, which is probably the majority um, of how you're gonna be doing like 2D setups anyways. Uh, that's easy enough to do. Um, you can come to the character movement and near the bottom, there is planar movement. You can actually constrain it to a plane and you're either gonna do the X or the Y. Unless you're doing like some weird flying game, then you're probably gonna do the Z. But I'll set the Y to a value of one. This is either zero or one, um, nothing in between, just so it'll basically constrain it on that plane. So basically one evaluates to true. So if we compile, save and play. Now I can move this way, but I can't move you know, this way, it won't let me. So I'm basically stuck on this plane now. But easy enough. Now let's um, kind of mess with the, the camera settings here a bit. Um, so our camera boom right now is oriented incorrectly. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and I am going to disable use pawn control rotation. Also, if you don't uncheck this, we're going to be setting the, um, 
the rotation value to 90 degrees. And we're gonna set that to world absolute. But you notice it didn't move. That's because it has the pawn control rotation. You gotta uncheck that. And then your camera will actually move over. And if we compile and save, uh, and now we have the camera basically stuck in a correct axis. But we still have an issue where you probably don't notice it, but I have to push the S key, which is normally down, to move right. And then to go left, I have to push the W key. Um, and that's just because of our player controller. So we can go into the event graph and find our movement. And this is using the control rotation. Um, instead of that, let's just shift select these nodes. Uh, so instead of the control rotation, uh, it makes more sense for this type of setup to use the camera's rotation. So we can use the follow camera. We'll do get world rotation. And then for this value, we will do get right vector. Plug that in there. And this one is going to be the X value, right? Yeah, okay, so the X value should be the right vector. The Y value should be the up vector. So again, kind of the same thing. Drag the camera, get the world rotation, and then get the up vector. Plug that in there, compile and save. And now my controls make a lot more sense. So the A key is moving me left, D key is moving me right. I can do my double jump. And I can't, uh, the uh, W and S keys are not doing anything now, basically. So I'm basically locked in my axis. So when you build your map, you would obviously, you know, yeah, maybe you still make a 3D map, but obviously you would uh, build it appropriate to the plane that you're stuck in, depending on what you're doing. Um, and there, you know, you don't have to constrain to a plane. You could just uh, use collision boxes to block them in a certain area and then just handle it that way. Um, I don't really like the way the camera is acting, um, especially when it comes to collision. So maybe we can um, go in the viewport, we'll select the camera boom, and let's enable some camera lag. So maybe we'll do two. Max distance, we'll do maybe 200, because this is a very small uh, player. So now you got a little bit more of a catch up, I guess. Yeah, I think that looks all right. You can play with the values, I guess, however you're, you're going for your, your prototype or your game. And then we got the double jump already in, but um, I mean, yeah, I think uh, maybe I'll expand on this topic. I'll do some, uh, maybe some enemies and some other things you can do. But uh, as you can see, Unreal Engine is pretty friendly to 2D development. So, you know, don't be afraid to use it for that. Um, but all right, everyone, that pretty much concludes this topic. But as always, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you on the next one.